and we're going to go ahead. We're going to kick it off, guys. So look, first and foremost, thank you very much for coming to another Tuesday live training. Um, always appreciate it. I know you guys get access to it afterwards, but it's always nice if we get a bit of a group here. And, uh, you know, it's it's a better energy anyway, I think, personally. I, en I enjoy doing the live ones. Hopefully you guys get a little bit more value out of it as well. And it's always good to see everybody. But what are we going to get in today? Well, today, what I want to do is it's, a, it's not really unique, I suppose, but it's, uh, it has to do with neuroscience. And you'll understand when we get into it a little bit deeper. Um, it's the, the title is going to be what you think about, you bring about. But it has to do with neural associative conditioning. It has to do with the neuroscience. But what I want to do to get the first about 13 minutes, I'm going to play a TED Talk, which is going to give you a very good idea. But then what I want to do is I want to get into it much deeper. The last maybe half hour, 40 minutes, we'll get into it very, you know, a lot more, a lot more detail, but I want to see how it applies to what we're doing here. Because we always got to remember when we do these sessions, there's there's two main objectives whenever we do a session. First off, obviously to give you something that a tool that you can incorporate into your own life. Something you can incorporate into your own system, make it a little bit better, improve it a little bit. Um, maybe, you know, give you a little bit more drive or motivation or whatever you want to refer to it as strength, skill, um, to go ahead and improve the quality of your own life. But the, uh, the second objective is always to have a new tool that you can use with your clients. That's critical, guys. You always have to be, and I know everybody knows this, but I always like to beat it in. You always have to be upskilling. You always have to be learning new skills, new strategies, new methods, techniques that when you're working with a client, well, you have something to bring to the table. You know, you're 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 considered an expert, an expert in your field, and you're there to provide solutions. It doesn't mean you always have to have the answer, but you should try to always be upskilling always trying to up your game, create more value. But the nice thing about it is the more you bring to the table, the more you have to offer to your client, the more you can use for yourself as well. Because that's one of one things I really love about what we're doing. It's an opportunity to help people, yes. Amazing, wonderful. It's an opportunity to earn income, fantastic. But you also have the opportunity to always be growing, always becoming a better version of yourself, always learning new skills and implementing those new skills into your own life, you know, to, to create and design a better life specifically for you. So we're going to watch this TED Talk, and it, it's roughly, I think it's about 12, 13 minutes. It's 2 o'clock in the morning. And Beth says, it's time. Now, these are not Braxton Hicks contractions. These are the real thing. Within minutes, we're in the car and we're racing towards the hospital. I come up to a red light and I stop. Beth says, run it. I look over at her. I run that red light. That was our first Bonnie and Clyde moment. But we got to the, to the hospital and the doctors and the nurses took over. And I thought my love for Beth was high. I didn't think it could grow, but watching her go through seven hours of hard labor, my respect and love went to uh, new levels on November 16th, 1993 at 9.34 a.m. Our son, Bo, was born. And this was one of the happiest days of my life. The first call I made was to my dad. Dad, you have a new grandson. He was so, so happy. And the cool thing was that he was born at 934. And 34 was my dad's favorite number because he was born in 1934. And so he also was, he was my greatest cheerleader. 
He was the guy that would always say, great job. He was the first one, if there's any problems, he would be there to help me out. So he was kind of my cheerleader. He was my go-to uh, guy. And that, this was one of the happiest days of my life. But it wasn't going to last very long. Because you see, the next morning, my stepmom called. And when she called, I could tell by the tone of her voice that something was bad, something really bad had happened. And so she said, Blaine, I'm sorry. Your dad had a massive heart attack, and he died. And, and in that moment, I didn't know what to do. I, I, I ended the, the call. I was in shock. And I was crying with Beth in this hospital room. And I remember walking into, there was a little bathroom that was part of this. And I, and I kind of fell to the floor. And I started crying. I started weeping. And I'm not a big crier. I cry more today than I, than I did back then. But that time was the, the time I cried the hardest. Uh, because that was my cheerleader. He was my go-to guy. And he was gone instantly. You see, he actually he died from what's called sudden death heart attack. And that means you have a heart attack and you die from the very first one. You don't know you have heart disease. You don't know any of that stuff. And so I had to pull myself together. I pulled myself together. I had to fly back, uh, bury my father. And, uh, and then when I came back, I had to make a choice. Was I going to be bitter? Or was it, somehow was this going to make me better? And I had all the reasons. I was bitter. I was bitter at the world. I was bitter at my circumstances. And I was even bitter at God at that moment. But when I got back at that time in my life, what saved my life was Waiteba. So Waiteba saved my life. And I'm gonna, I, I want to share with you how Waiteba saved my life. But what I want to do is I'm more kind of a teacher, trainer, educator person. And I want to make sure that you understand what Waiteba is, number one. And number two, I want you to use Waiteba. I want you to be able to start using it right now, uh, today. And so Waiteba kind of sounds like a circus tiger's name. What does it stand for? It's actually an acronym. And we have the nice lights here that my wife set up. And it stands for what you think about you bring about, right? So say that. What you think about, you bring about. Everybody say it. What you think about, you bring about. Now to anchor that in, it's good if you do some type of movement or motion like it is. So, so now when you say it like this, say what you think about, point to your head. Everyone say what you think about, you, think about. you bring about. And do this with the roller. So what you think about, think about. exactly. So what you think about, you bring about. Now I want to have a little fun because I want to teach a little bit and, and make it so you understand this concept. So we handed out some cards. They're called White Table Cards. And the cards, there's three different cards, because I'm going to have you hold up which you are, whether you're an expert, an intermediate, or a novice. So if you can get those cards out. First of all, do we have any gardeners in the room? Who knows what this is? Tomato. Tomato plant. Very good. So we have some gardeners in the room. Now, in, in gardening, whatever you put in the soil, the soil returns, right? So if you plant tomato seeds, you get tomatoes. If you plant carrots, you get carrots, right? So whatever is uh, planted is, is returned. And so the first thing I want to know is, what type of gardener are you? So if you're a novice, that means you hate gardening, you never planted a garden. Intermediate, someone that has planted a few gardens. And then if you're an expert, then you, uh, you, not only can you plant, you can probably teach someone else. So hold up the card. Let me see what we have in the room. OK, so we've got intermediates, uh, experts. A bunch of novices over here, OK? All right, so if you plant nothing, then you get nothing. And for me, this is one of the greatest tragedies of gardening, first of all, is if nothing's planted, then nothing could ever grow. Right? You might get weeds, which is even worse. That's stuff you don't want. But you've got to plant something to grow something. And so your mind, why table, what you think about, you bring about, your mind is like that garden, that whatever you plant in the mind is what you can bring about, right? So, so you've got to plant something in there. So what, my second question for you that we'll answer with the cards is, what type of gardener of the mind are you? What type of gardener of the mind are you? And so what that means, the novice is someone who really it's, um, their life is almost run by circumstance. Right? So they're, they're, they're not planting any kind of ideas of what they want. They're just run by circumstance. An intermediate gardener of the mind is somebody that uh, has some goals, has written goals, plants some things in, in their mind, what they want. Maybe you've got uh, you know, some goals and some things you want to accomplish and to-do list. That's the intermediate. And the expert, the expert is the person that actually plants what they want every day, but multiple times during the day. They're always planting what they want. So hold up the cards. Let me see what, if you're a novice or if you're 
an intermediate. Almost all intermediates. That's pretty good. All right, a couple, a couple of experts over here. Perfect. Well, it turns out that brain science, neuroscience, is kind of finally proven why white table works. And so if you, have you ever had this experience where uh, maybe you, you test driven a new car, or you bought a new car, or in my case, your son bought a new Acura car, and all of a sudden, you see them everywhere, right? Or someone tells you about a red car, and all of a sudden, you see them everywhere, Acura, Acura, Acura. So after my son sent us a picture of his car, I'm seeing them all over the place, right? Now, is that new? Uh, you know, were they never there or were they always there and I'm tuning into it? It turns out that, yes, they were always there, but I was tuned into it. And so science has found and discovered something called the reticular activating system. And it's about the size of your pinky in the back of the brain, and it's the filter. It decides what bri what's going to come into your mind, right? So when I, when I planted the seed of the Acura car, now I'm seeing it everywhere, right? Because the, the reticular activating system is letting in stuff to support. It's giving me data to support what I think is important, right? Same thing if like someone calls your name in a crowd area, you hear that. It's the reticular activating system. So what I want to do now is I want to make this real for you. So if you turn over any one of those cards, you're going to see on the other side, um, there's some lines there and then it says Waiteba. But on those lines, I want you to write down one thing that you want to bring about in your life. So I want you to write down one thing that you want to bring about in your life right now. So think about that for a minute. Typically, sometimes people will do health. Maybe you want to drink more water. Maybe you like to exercise more. Sometimes people want to bring about something in connections and relationships. Maybe you want to deepen a relationship with someone. Maybe you want to meet somebody new. So take a moment, write that down. Maybe you, uh, maybe you want a new job, so uh, write down better job. Now, if you're sitting next to your boss, don't write it in code, right? <laughs> better J. So if you have to write it in code, that's OK, as long as you know what it is. That's all that matters. Or maybe it's something spiritual. Maybe there's something that uh, you want a deeper connection with God. But right now, take a moment. Just write down the first thing that comes to your mind that you want to bring about in your life. So now we need to, we have this, the, the seed. What you think about, you bring about. And so there's three components there. One is that, that this thing you want. Now you have that seed. The second thing is we've got to program the RAS. And then third is you have to take actions. The key to this whole thing working, white table working, is you take the action that the RAS brings up. So the second part is, of this is how could we program the RAS? Do you think it's possible that I could remind you? Let's say you wrote down, I want to exercise more. Do you think I could remind you of that 100 times a day, every day? Now it would be considered nagging. But nagging does work. But do you think I could remind you 100 times a day? Is that possible? Well, it is possible because right now, you live in a very unique time and space because you have the most powerful device uh, known to mankind, and that is the smartphone. Right? So everybody, now there may be a few flip phones in the audience, and that's okay, don't worry. Uh, but most people have smartphones. And so if you see on the screen here, that's the unlock screen. Some smart people, this one company, they took 150,000 people and they put a little piece of code and they measured how many times they turned on their phone and unlocked it. How many times did it? How many times a day do you think the average person unlocks their phone? 10? 50? 80? I heard 100, very close. It's actually 110 times a day. 110 times, that's the average. Now, there's some people that do much more than that. If you think about it, you know, that might only be like six or seven an hour of waking hours. Uh, some people, they, they were tracking, they were surprised how many people checked it between 3 a.m. and 5 a.m. But this is the most, this is the number one tool for programming your RAS is the unlock screen. Right? And so you see on the screen here, what I did about three weeks ago is I made this one similar to what you, the piece of paper you have. I have rocked the TED Talk. So 110 times a day, I'm seeing that. So I, I worked a lot uh, you know, to prepare for this. But my RAS was giving me ideas. Oh, you could do this, or you could do that. Try this. Make it interactive. Make, do this, do that. And so the number one thing, if you take nothing else away from our time together today, is to understand why TABA, what you think about, you bring about. But the action steps, see, I'm, I'm kind of a nuts and bolts, you know, practical, you know, do stuff guy. And if you do one thing, is to take what, that one thing you want, that thing you're trying to bring about, and take a picture, you know, of that card with your cell phone, and then make that your unlock screen, right? Make that your unlock screen. Now, if you don't know how to do that, ask a teenager, or on the break, ask somebody. We'll show you how to do it, because I was surprised. 
I started my own study, my own research, and I started checking people. And you know what? I was working with a, a coaching an attorney just last week, and we turned on his phone. He said, turn your phone on. Let me see that. It was the default screen. I was in another meeting uh, just this week, and I said, let me see your phone. Just curious. The default screen, it's unused. That's that unplanted garden that I was talking about. Let me finish with this. Let me come back to how I used white table. See, I came back from that funeral. And then this is a picture of my dad there when he came out to my graduation. This is one of those Polaroids. He loved the Polaroids. And so I came back from his funeral, and, and I was bitter. And that was, the, that was the roughest Christmas that I ever had. Uh, you know, I just wanted it to be over. But I knew the concept of white table, what you think about, you bring about. And I knew that if I planted bitterness, it was going to take root. If I, if I gave any more consideration to bitter, it was going to get bigger. And that's not what I wanted. So I knew that I had to plant a seed. And I came up with that seed. And that seed was to be a work at home dad. And so I had to get that. I, I came up with the seed. I made a decision. Then I had to program the RAS. Now, I wish I had the smartphone. It would have been easier. But I had to make some cards. I had to listen to a lot of audio tapes. And I really had to drown out all the noise, all the bitterness, all the, 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 the little voice of doubt. I had to drown all that stuff out. And the RAS started finding things for me. So that, real, that critical step, so, so you plant the seed, you program the RAS. But then you've got to take action. You've got to action on it. And so things started happening. My RAS was tuning me into a home-based business I could do, another business I could run from home, um, a friend of mine I could partner in another business. And all that stuff happened. And after a year, I made that jump to full-time dad in honor of my dad. And so then, you know, for the last 20 years, I've been that person. Right? So I've been at the school, at the bus stop, or I coach the soccer, coach the tennis. I, I've been very involved with, with the kids. But you can have that too. Right? That, can, that can be there for you as well. So this is your opportunity. This is your opportunity to, to plant that seed. You already wrote it on the card. But plant that seed. What do you want? What you think about, you bring about. You have that opportunity right now to plant that seed. And when that seed starts to grow and the RAS kicks in, um, you know, possibilities are going to be there, right? Because the garden of your mind, the garden of your mind is endless. The Raz is waiting. What you think about, you bring about. White Teva. I'm Blaine Elkers. Thank you very much. Okay, guys. So what you think about, you bring about. Take a moment now, just kind of think about that for a second. What do we do within our system that we think about it in order to bring about it, bring it about? Well, there's a good few things, and we're, we're going to take a look at some of them a little bit deeper. But we, that's already incorporated into what we do each and every day, what you should be doing. Hopefully, you're still doing it. But each and every day, you should be saying your definite major purpose statement. And that's exactly what that is. We're going to look at it a little bit more deeper. But it's all about that R-A-S. And what, what I want to do is I want to take a look at what Mel Robbins says about it. We all know Mel Robbins at this stage. We all know about the five-second rule. We all know about her high five habit, which hopefully we talked about the high five habit last week. Hopefully some of you are doing that. Hopefully all of you are doing it. I know I did all week. I've done that. And uh, as silly as it sounds, I understand it and I believe in it because it's not just a silly little slapping yourself a high five in the mirror. You're reinforcing a positive anchor. It all has to do with neuroassociative conditioning. But I went on to Mel Robbins' Facebook page, and I want to see what she says about RAS. So she, she has posted on her Facebook page six cool things you didn't know about your brain and how to use it to your advantage. Number one. Your brain has a filter, a filter called the reticular activating system, or RAS. The RAS is everything when it comes to neuroassociative conditioning. 
it's your filter. A simple way to think about the RAS is your mind is processing so much information at any given time, you would not be able to function if you were to notice and focus on everything. All the different colors, all the different sound, all the different movements, all the different objects and shapes. You wouldn't patterns. You, you would not be able to focus. So the job of the RAS is to serve as a filter. It basically, it filters out everything except for the things that you've programmed it through peri uh, past experiences, through you know repetition that you've identified is something that's important to you, something that matters. That's why when he gives the example that about a new car or a new outfit or some new uh, gadget, and it could be your new, you know, the, the newest phone, that you never paid attention to it until you got it or until you started thinking about buying it or until somebody you knew had something and you wanted it. Then all of a sudden, they're all over the place. They were always there, but they're filtered out. That's the job of the RAS. So, and Mel Robbins understands this, and she talks about it a lot, a real lot, especially in the high five habit. The whole concept of the, um, the high five habit is about neuroassociative conditioning or, or neuroscience. And I, I refer to it as conditioning because it's the power of repetition doing it over and over and over again. But again, and the RAS plays a major, major role in neuroscience. So according to Mel Robbins, there's only four things that automatically get past uh, the RAS into your conscious brain. So again, think of the RAS as your filter. Nothing gets from the subconscious to the conscious brain without it passing through the RAS. And the only four things, according to Mel Robbins, and I, she does her research pretty thoroughly, so I have no reason to doubt her. The only four things that she uh, states on her website that get through the, uh, to the conscious brain uh, well, um, without the RAS is the sound of your name being called, anything that's, that threatens your safety, how she knows this one, I don't know, but the signal uh, that your partner is interested in having sex, or whenever your RAS thinks it uh, thinks is important. And that's the really important one. Those are things that basically you condition it, that you tell it is important. When you set a goal and you focus on that goal and you think about that goal on a consistent basis, you're telling your RAS, this is important to me. It's similar to like we've talked about many times before. When, when you set your objective, when, when you set your definite major purpose, and you're telling your brain, your subconscious mind, what, what you want, well, what, what are you doing? You're, you're programming yourself. Through the end that we tell you about mixing in emotions and through the power of repetition. So it will get passed through your RAS. It won't be blocked. And into your conscious brain. That's when your conscious brain starts looking for ways to help you. Instead of working against you, it works with you, it works in conjunction with you. It'll start to notice things that it wouldn't have noticed previously because the RAS is allowing it to. But things that you've identified are gonna help you move towards your goal. That's powerful. And that's science. That's not theory. That's not just me talking. I believe this happens. It's not when people talk about the law of attraction. 
I'm a huge, as you know, believer in the law of attraction. But this is the reason why the law of attraction works. It's based on neuroscience. It all has to do with your RAS. You can train your brain to focus, focus on what's important to you. We all know the power of focus, guys. It's, the, it's part of our core four. Focus, balance, purpose, and then the science, the science of neuroassociative conditioning that makes up our system. But basically what she's saying here is that you can train your brain through the power of focus to let the, to, uh, to get past the RAS, you know, to, to prevent the filter from blocking things by focusing on your goals. You know, focusing on the things that you're primarily, that, that you really desire. And you hear what he was talking about there. It's not just about objects. If you think about the example he gave in his TED Talk, he said you can use it for what? Your health, as the first one he mentioned, is your health, improve your relationships. He talked about how he used it to go ahead and become a work uh, at home dad and what is that it's your finances but all the things all the things that we focus on consistently you're just programming your ras that's what the system is doing for you okay so when we talk about that it's important that you understand it and it's important that you believe it and you become very comfortable with it into your own life and also with the clients that you're working with. So again, to reinforce your belief that, guys, this isn't just me making up stuff as we go along here. This is, everything we're doing is based on science, the science of neuroassociative conditioning or neuroscience. Number four, as soon as you think something is important, you identify it as being important to you, your RAS will let it into your conscious mind. And she gives the example there about a car. Um, but again, you decide, you have the power to decide what are you going to let through your RAS? What are you going to identify that's important? Are you going to identify that your relationships are important and why? Are you going to identify that your health is important and your health goals and your personal growth and your finances? You decide. It's really important. And I know you understand it, but through the power of repetition, through conditioning, I'm going to keep trying to bang it in there. But it's important that you really get this stuff because it works. Um, right now, you're missing opportunities because you haven't trained your brain to help you okay your ras is blocking them it's not identifying those opportunities he tells the story about when he wanted to be a work from home dad i tell the story about when i moved here to ireland uh i had conditioned myself my wife and I, we used to say our definite major purpose every day um, for 18 months minimum, probably, before we moved here. And then when we landed here, I conditioned myself that, and my whole thing was I wanted to work for myself. I told my wife the day that we landed here, I could be happy in Ireland as long as I worked for myself. So, what did my brain? My conscious brain, what did the uh, RAS slip through? It understood that working for myself was extremely important to me. So right away, it started identifying multitudes of ways that I could earn a, a good living working for myself. And fortunately enough, I did that for 20 years. From the day I landed here, I went 20 years being self-employed, which 
in 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 real in real terms isn't an easy task when you land in a country like I land I'm not patting myself on the back I'm just saying the reality of it I landed in a country Ireland where I had no contacts none whatsoever other than my in-laws were all farmers and if you haven't realized it by now I'm not a farmer so for me to to land here having no contacts not knowing the lay of the land and from day one and i didn't live on savings i i had savings but i earned money day one working for myself because i had conditioned myself but you can use it for anything you can use it for your your income you can use it for your health your relationships whatever is important to you you're in total control your mind is designed to help you get what you want in life it's really important that you understand that your 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 mind isn't designed to work against you realistically it's been conditioned that way there's things in there that they it thinks that primarily it's protecting you when it's not but it's a, designed in such a way that you can identify that it's designed in a way that once you understand it well you can you can program it you can program it to get and it's no, there's no mystical powers behind it. You know, the law of attraction is nothing but neuroscience uh, and your RAS mixed in with the power of emotions and some universal laws. But again, it does work. But it's all based on science, guys. And you guys have that science. And you guys are using it every day, whether you realize it or not. Like I told you from the very beginning, it's all built in to the system. So Mel Robbins says, you know, if you want to learn more, go on to the five, the high five habit dot com. It's it's worth a look, guys. It's definitely worth it. She's got some good information. But Mel Robbins, I tell you what, I got nothing but time for Mel Robbins. I think she's phenomenal. But it's all based on science, everything she's doing. She puts in a very simplistic way, the very same as we do here. Our system is based on the same principles as she teaches. They're just packaged differently, but they're both simple and they're both effective. So another resource besides Mel Robbins, and I wanted to kind of beat this in that this isn't theory, Entrepreneur Magazine. Okay, wrote an article, neuroscience tells us how to hack our brains for success. Tricks like visualization and writing down your goals have a strong basis in science. What do they mean by that? Well, basically what they're talking about is the RAS. By telling your RAS pretty much exactly what you want. The neuroscience of success can get complicated, but it's really about how your brain functions in three different areas. areas. Your RAS, um, your release of do dopamine, and your memory. And then it goes on to talk about is he's going to explain in the simplistic, painless way as possible. But basically, it's all talking about your RAS. And basically, it goes on, and I won't, I'm not going to bore you by reading it. That's called Death by PowerPoint, where you just put a bunch of text up on the screen and read it. But the concept of the RAS is nothing more than it's a filter. It's, it's, it stands in between your subconscious mind and your conscious mind. And with the exception of those four things that Mel Robbins talked about, nothing gets through without the approval of the RAS. But what it's telling you here is that you can program the RAS through the power of repetition. It says here, writing down your goals every day writing them down. What are you doing? You're programming, you're conditioning yourself. 
Um, it talks about uh, emotions there as well. Um, again, you, it'll it'll accept it much easily when you mix in the power of emotions. But it goes on to talk about in the article that um, you know the science behind it and, and how to you know it, it acts as a filter. It refers to it as like Google. If you think about Google. There's literally, well, it's, it says here millions. I, I think at this stage, there's probably billions of websites out there. But if you had to shift through all of those to find out, to, to find the information you're looking for, you would never get it done. So what does Google do? Well, it's a buffer. It stands between you and all, you know, the, the internet that's on the internet and basically it's nothing, you don't get to the outside, I mean, to the rest of the internet without going through it. And basically it filters out what you're looking for. It does a comparison. That's primarily what the RAS does for you. Um, you know, it's, and then it talks about what messages actually get through. Again, when we know what messages get through. The ones that we're focused on, the ones that we identify are important to us, our goals. But the power is, the power behind it is you can program yourself, but you have to be very, very careful that well, you're programming it correctly. You don't want to program it with what you don't want. You definitely don't want to be doing that because then what's going to happen? A bunch of things you don't want are going to come into your life, are going to be identified, and you're going to move towards them. You want to make sure that through the power of repetition that you're conditioning yourself over and over and over again daily with the things that you want, with the things that are important to you. And you have a structure for doing exactly that. You have a structure to teach the clients, your prospects, that you're working with how to do exactly that um and it talks about affirmations and that's just nothing more than what repetition mixing in strong positive emotions over and over and over again telling your brain exactly what it wants but this is the thing that i found the most interesting from the article Say your chief aim, say your chief aim every morning and evening. What are they basing that on? Based on Napoleon Hill's Think and Grow Rich. The exact same thing that we do. A definite chief, chief aim is uh, a specific, clearly defined statement of purpose, writes Dr. Julie Connors. Well, what is that? That's your purpose statement. That's the exact same thing that we learn in lesson number three. The power of that purpose statement. What are you doing when you say that purpose statement? Every single day, mixing in the power of emotion. You are programming your RAS to identify, to let through the things that it, it sees out there in the world that it identifies are the things that will move you closer to your objective, to your goal, to the things that are important to you. It doesn't know. It's like Google. It doesn't know if you don't tell it. You've got to tell it. What you have in the system, you have a, a structured way how to do that each and every day. But I, I have to wonder how many people are still doing it every single day. You know, there's people out there right now listening to this have been doing it, whatever, 18 months and more. Some have only been doing it a few months. Some have been doing it six. It doesn't matter. But are you still doing it every single day? 
or did you get bored with it? Did you think, ah, this is this is nice in theory? It's a science, guys, and it works. And hopefully, hopefully you get that now. Um, if you remember, when we went through exercise number three, you write it down. What do you write down your purpose statement? You write down a very clear, concise statement. And you can change that, guys. You know, you could stick to the same format, but you can make changes periodically. But you need to write it down. And again, remember we went through the exercise. You can change the structure. Um, my definite major purpose for today is because I do it every single day. What do you, why are you doing it in that manner? Because you're saying it in, in a statement with a date. The date is today. You're informing your RAS exactly what you want for that day. So, again, myself, my definite major purpose for today is to live my life to the best of my ability is a happy, well-balanced, strong, independent man. Then I give the reasons. The reasons I choose to live this lifestyle is because I know living this on a consistent daily basis will virtually guarantee um, I develop and enjoy loving, lasting, meaningful relationships with my wife, children, friends, family, creator, and virtually everyone I come into contact with. What am I telling? I'm telling my RAS exactly what I want in the area of my relationships that day. I want to be happy, well-balanced, strong, and independent. And the reasons why, because I want to have loving, lasting, meaningful relationships with those people. I'm telling my RAS, I'm conditioning my RAS to identify ways to help me to achieve that goal. To let all the things out there, the sounds that come in, the statements that are said to me when I'm analyzing how somebody says something, when my wife speaks to me in a certain manner, when my children act a certain way, when I have an encounter with somebody, what way I'm interpreting it, because that's all done internally. But when you tell the RAS what you want, it doesn't identify ways to work against you. It identifies ways to move you towards your goal. It'll identify ways to help you to go ahead and achieve your objective for the day. So when it's interpreting those things or when it's calculating what your response should be with some of those individuals, it's going to hopefully, hopefully give you good advice, good guidance of how you should respond in certain uh, situations. But then you'll remember, and I'll go through it real quick from here. But again, then I do the same thing about my level of health and fitness. I'm telling my RAS exactly what I want and why I want it. And I'm mixing in the motion because we understand the importance that the emotion plays when programming your RAS. I do the exact same thing as far as for my what? my personal growth. You know, I, I tell what, what I want. I want to continuously grow as an individual. I want to increase my level of intelligence, ability, and understanding uh, so I have more to give not only to myself, but my family and society as a whole. What do I want in that area? There it is. Why do I want it? There it is. Last but not least, then I go into my finances. What do I want from my finances? So again, it's identifying opportunities for me to increase my earnings, reduce my outgoings, get more value for the, for the money that I possess. It's not mystical. It's science. Everything that you've learned in that purpose statement is all about, it's a neuroscience programming your RAS, that filter. So now, your subconscious mind is letting through to your conscious mind exactly what you want 
so your conscious mind can identify all the things that can help you to achieve those goals. Hopefully that makes some sense to you guys, that um, you, you, you're, you understand it. I wanted to share this with you. I know we've talked about it, but it's been a while. And I have to believe some of you are probably not using that as much as you should. How often should you use it? Technically, you should use it twice a day. First thing in the morning, last thing at night. And you could say, ah, that's a lot. Yeah, maybe it is. But how long does that really take? I could say that purpose statement there, a minute and a half. Maybe if I really drag it out two minutes, do it twice a day, you've got four minutes invested in programming yourself for success. And again, it's, it's all based on science. Every single speck of it is proven. It's not theory, it's fact. It works. So I would really encourage you to revisit that. If you haven't been doing it to the level that you should be, I would really encourage you to go back and start from scratch and start doing it again. If you need to redesign, if you need to reword, if you need to rejig it a little bit, do it. But at the end of the day, it's for you. And you need to make sure that you understand how powerful it is. And the way you're going to understand it is by doing it yourself. Remember, learn by doing. So when you're working with prospects, when you're working with clients, they're going to believe what you're saying because it'll come through. And it'll come through because you're using it yourself and you believe in it yourself. But again, you don't have to take my word for it. Take Mel Robbins. There's, just go and do a bit of research on it, guys. There's mountains of information that will support that this works. And again, it's not airy-fairy theory. It's a fact. So look, we'll wrap it up uh, on that. So as always, I want to thank you for coming. Uh, hopefully you guys got a little bit of value out of that. Hopefully you've reinforced um, the power of your purpose statement. Questions, comments, concerns, as always, I'm available after this session. Uh, be available for a good half hour. Uh, if you need me, please feel free to reach out. Other than that, thanks again, and we shall see you all next week, not sooner. All right? Have a great night, guys. All the best.